as you are seated here, God has made you wonderfully and fearfully. The Bible confirms it, Psalm 139, 14. He has put everything that is supposed to make you live healthy in you. He has put in you, the day you are born, the day you are being conceived, even in the tomb, he has put in you all disease detecting mechanisms. Those things that can detect whether you have disease, whether disease is entering into your system or not. God has made you perfectly well, perfectly well to stay healthy even unto 120 years. But the, most of the time, the thing is, we don't do those things he wants us to do. We don't follow what he wants us to do. We don't follow his laws. We don't follow his directions as to how to handle this mechanism, this, uh, this engine he has given unto us to be productive. This engine he has given unto us to do our businesses, to, do our, to, go on ahead, to go ahead with our career. We are not handling this organism very well. We are mismanaging this engine. If you buy a new car today and you are putting wrong oil in it, and you are not putting water where you are supposed to put water. What will happen to the engine? Aha, go, thank you very much. As you assisted, every one of us will have about three, I said it some time ago, that 300 trillion cells is what you are made of. Every minute, 300 million are destroyed, and you need to replace the, the destroyed cells. Then what we we'll do is replace. The living cell that God breathed unto us will replace with dead cells. And there was one analogy I gave one time. That like this house is, I'm sure it's a, you know it's built by, with bricks, isn't it? If you have an opportunity of removing one block every two months, just remove one block and replace with another one. And you are now replacing with sand block, not cement block this time around. By the time you remove for 30 years, what will happen to the building? That's what happens to our health. God has made it life, living. Those ones that have been destroyed, we are supposed to replace with living things, living cells, living food. They will replace with dead cells. So by the time we are 40, we are 45. 30. In fact, this day starts at 35 because we destroy our lives so easily. We start cracking. We start falling. We start collapsing. Am I making sense? So what are you supposed to do? What are the health habits you are supposed to, to, to develop? Because if you are not healthy, even your business you can't do. Agree, let's agree you can even do some business and make some money. You will end up spending that money in the hospital. You will end up going from one doctor to the other, treating one thing or the other. Please, by the time I finish today, I want you to become my disciple. And I'm happy I'm having so many disciples now. Like about four days, my father called me and said, Mommy, I think I want to follow your, li your lifestyle. I want to be living healthy now because I want to live healthy for my children. My grandchildren will say, if the whole house is sick, mommy will not be sick. So they will come and say, Grandma, you have not given us fruit, oh. give us fruit. When they go to the toilet and poo, they find it difficult to poo. And they are strained, they say, ah, call Grandma, grow Grandma, water, water. <laughs> I will say, it's not now that you take water, you must make it a lifestyle. So please, Build up a health habit that will improve your health. If you start today, your health will improve. And what made me to start was a lot of health challenges that I had. People say, I bounce now. I'm healthier, I'm stronger, I'm energized to the glory of God because I decided to research into what can make me healthy, what can keep me strong. I had arthritis, talk about it at 41. I had arthritis to carry this leg. Ah, Now talk of dancing to reach the ground. People that can dance now reach the ground. This hand, even to tie wrapper, this joint. I'm sure some people are saying, mm -hmm. this joint, I started wearing it because I couldn't use this hand to tie wrapper. Before you know it, I had a big growth here. He said I had fibroid. And to finish it all, by the age of 48, um, by 40, I started doing my medical checkup. Every year, I go to do medical checkup. But at one time, they said I had precancerous cells of the cervix. That is, my cervix started having signs of cancer. Is that not so? So I just thought to myself, ah, the people in the Bible lived for so, so years, and they were healthy at 65. Mama Sarah entered the place, and the man said, don't tell them you are my wife. And when, the, when she entered the town, they said the, the, the guys in the town went to meet the Oba and said, ah, ah, a damsel at 65, damsel be babu. Am I lying? So I just thought to myself, what were the things we were doing then? 
What were the things they were doing then that was making them healthy, that was making them to live longer? And I searched the scriptures. And that's everything on, in life. Everybody I talked to, they are talking about it. Everything that in life actually hangs on the scriptures. And the first thing I discovered was the food. By today, all these pains are gone. The first thing that went, the first thing that went was the arthritis. I just discovered I could move my leg, I could bend down, I could come. Ah, I was like, eh. So when they said I had precancerous cells of the cervix, I went for six months without eating cooked food. I was eating raw food, vegetables and fruits. For six and everybody in my house was like, hallelujah ah, diet. I said, ah, is that the diet I'm on now? Because I don't want to die, I want to live long. So I told about that, I'll be there, I'll be available. After six, the doctor said I should be doing my, you know what they call pastor, they just take something from your cervix. Every woman, when I get to medical checkup, I'll talk about it. Every woman must do pap smear. So it was at this, my pap smear, that they discovered that these cells were heart problems. So what I should have been doing every five years, the doctor now said I should be doing it every six months. She was allowed today. At the age of 40 something, they said, do your pap smear every six months instead of every five. If you are with me, answer me. Every five. Well, at the hospital, me. So I thought to myself, how many did you get in the hospital? Cancer, you treat, you have radiotherapy, have chemotherapy, have everything, you still die. You suffer, suffer, and die. And I don't want to die suffering. If I'm, I'm going to die healthy, I'm going to meet my God. So I decided I was going to take my health in my own hand with the grace of God. And at this structure, I want to tell you three people are responsible for, three institutions are responsible for your health. One, God. And I told you, he has perfected his own sight. He has even given you promises in the Bible to claim to enjoy good health. Abi, He has given you scriptures in the word of God to enjoy good health. Even if you are sick, he has given you scriptures. Exodus 15, 26, I am your healer. I will heal thee. Is it not so? Uh -huh. So God has perfected his own side. The second institution is the government. I'm sure you know the government has failed. I don't have time to tell you the statistics of number of doctors who have hospitals and all that. So the, go <laughs> so the government is not fulfilling its own part. So the responsibility actually rests on you to take control and take charge of your own. God bless you. So the first thing you do, number one, make sure you, are, you, you have peace. Because do this, do that, do this, do that. If you don't have peace, you can't enjoy hell too. So have peace with God. Have peace with men. Have peace with your love, your relations. Have peace with your children, your spouses. Enjoy your relationship. Be loved. Be merry at heart. They say merry heart is what? Mercy to the... But a sorrowful heart is what? Dries up the bone. You know the problem of a dry bone. Somebody that has cancer. Bones is dry. Hmm? So I kept doing my... My six monthly something until after I did for two years. Doctor now said, ah, this thing is improving, you know, it's not going any further. It's not getting worse. You can be doing it yearly. I said, thank you. So I stopped. I mean, I, st I stopped having 24-7 raw food. I, I introduced one meal, into one cooked meal into it. I will have raw in the morning, cooked food in the afternoon, raw at night in the evening. And I did that until 2013. When I went for my annual checkup and I had a clean slate, <laughs> what is this? What is this? I said, Kileri, what is happening? He said, if I take the picture of this cervix and ask the medical student to tell me the parity of this cervix, the number of children that has passed through this cervix, they will write nil. All of them will write nil. That this, is a, this looks like a Nunipala cervix, a cervix that a child has never passed through before. You are healed. I had a clean slate, clean bill. You can have it. Tell yourself, I can have it. But you have to decide to jump on the road of healthy habits. Once you jump on it, whatever you are eating now, I can't take Coke. Oh, it will appear as if I'm pouring sugar right into my mouth. I can't take Martina. I can't take Viber Life. I can't take tea with milk and sugar. My tea is pure only. I can't. It will not even. My, my body will be. I can't even understand. You understand. So whatever you change to today, in two weeks, if you stop eating salt today, in two weeks your tongue will adapt to it. Your tongue 
we adapt to not eating salt. So anybody that cooks any food, you will think it is too salty. Anywhere you eat food, at parties you can't eat food anymore, you think it is too salty because your tongue has adapted to it. If you stop taking coke within a short while, you won't be able to take it again. Stop taking pies, stop taking... Your body will adjust to it. So, I was talking about peace before I diversify. So, peace, please be at peace with God and with all men. The next thing is water. Tap your neighbor and say, water. Water. Shout it loud, oh. Good. As you are seated, you are, the whole of you, the whole of us is 70 to 75% water. So, and you lose water all the time. You lose water through your sweat. As I'm talking, I'm losing water. We are seated, our air conditioner is not working. We are, we are, we are sweating. Even if it is working, we still have what we call insensible perspiration. You are, you are sweating, but you won't know. And this is more during hot weather. You might, you might be sweating and you won't know that you are losing water. Water is evaporating from your body, from your skin. You lose water when you, when you breathe. You lose water when you pass urine. You lose water. So you need to replace this water that you are losing. If you don't replace it, the kidneys will not function well because they will be walking heter scatter looking for water everywhere. They will look for water right in your intestine. And that's why by the time you are not taking enough water, your stool is very hard. So by the time you want to pull, you almost be bringing tears. And then we will say, ah, in fact, for three days, four days, I may not pass urine. You are, I may not pass two. You are sick. Ah, And they take pride in that, you know. You are sick. Because the kidneys have removed all the water in your stool. And therefore, you cannot have normal stool. It becomes so hard. And if it stays there for too long, it starts to, if your stool stays in your intestine for too long, it starts to decay. And before you know it, they say, ah, cancer of the colon, wahala day. So I'm saying that when anytime your stool is hard, you are not taking enough water. Anytime you pass stool and it, it stands, bam, you can hear the sound inside the closet, you are not taking enough water. Or it goes down this closet, because it's okay. Oh, oh, you are not taking enough water. Okay? If you pass urine and your urine is smelling, you can perceive smell your you from your urine, you are not taking enough water. If your urine is dark, yellow, or brown, it should just be a little darker than water. We call it amber color. That's the, that should be the color of your union. Anything outside that, you are not taking enough water. And it causes so many things. If you are not taking water, your skin, the kidney I told you will look for water everywhere. I said even your stool. It will look for water in your skin. That's why before we are 40, 50, we start to wrinkle. Your, your skin will wrinkle fast. Water is a moisturizer. It moisturizes you from within. What did I say? It moisturizes you from... You don't have to look for moisturizer. I don't use moisturizer. I use Oriya and Oshadudu. Do -do. It moisturizes you from within. You feel fresh. Water washes away excess salt, excess fat. The benefits are too many. But even if you don't know the benefits, please drink water. I can't emphasize all the benefits because of my time. I still have so many things to talk about. How do you know the quantity of water you will take? How? Just take your weight. Once your, whatever your weight is, divide it by what? Divide it by 30. Whatever you get, whatever the result is, is the minimum quantity of water you must take per day. Am I making sense? Divide your weight by 30. Whatever you get is the minimum quantity of water you must drink per day. If you are 90, if you weigh 90, divide by 3, what is it? Divide by 30, what is it? Like if I'm, I'm like I weigh 62, okay, let's put it out. Let's add it up to 60. I weigh 60. Divide by 30, what will it give me? That means every day I must not take less than 2 liters of water. Are you getting me? I'm sure if I ask you how many people have taken two cups of water today, ah, lepo. If you have taken two, three cups of water this morning, raise up your hand today. And you are supposed to take the minimum of people, they just put it at eight meters, eight, eight cups, but I don't. 
have research and because the, num the quantity of water you take depends on so many things. It depends on your weight. If I'm weighing 90 and you are weighing 60, you cannot take the same quantity of water. It depends on your activity. Somebody is just seated, a sedentary person, and somebody is breaking stones. One will sweat more than the other. The one that is breaking stone will need more water. Is that not so? Eh? Eh. Oh. So many reasons. Even your health, your state of health can determine whether you take more water or not. If you're on drugs, you take more water to flush it out, to help your liver and the kidney to handle the drugs. You need more water. But on general level, the minimum quantity of water you take, you, you divide your weight by 30, whatever you get. That's your uh, quantity, the quantity of water, the minimum quantity of water you must take. Pa. Tell your neighbor, take water. Tap your neighbor, tap, 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 tap. Take, take water and stay healthy. Let me give you an example I had last week. We had a, we had a child. Hmm? And she, every time, headache, 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 headache. You know, we did everything possible, every test and all, and no cause. He just called to me. I just called her last week. I said, yeah, by me. Do you know we have been running around and spending money? All you need is water. Say, mommy, but I don't like drinking water. In a day, she may, I, had, I discovered that in a day, she may not drink more than a cup of water. I said, that is why you are having a headache. Start today. What's your way? She told me. I said, okay, take this cup. This is the cup you must be using every day. Use, take three of these cups every day. Yesterday, I wanted to have a testimony for you. So I called her to ask. So I said, okay, mommy, that's really improved. Don't improve gun you. Don't see what they're there. Money cannot go within a week now. We just started this water. So the major cause of a migraine headache was dehydration. Dehydration can cause so many things. Please, take water. It's the best moisturizer. It's the greatest medicine on planet Earth. God knows that it is so, so important. That was why when he told the children of Israel, in Deuteronomy 8, 7, he said, I'm taking you to a good land. In that land, what do we have? Fountain of water, springs, and all. It's water. The first thing that made that land to be good is water. And he made it so cheap because it is so cheap. I told the guy, I said, if I'm giving you medicine that will be costing you 1000 per day now, you will send everywhere to give, to give us money or to give you money to buy the medicine. But because God made water so cheap and available, we don't care. We don't respect it. Please respect water. Tell your neighbor, respect water. Respect water. So please, let's take enough water for our, our health. I've told you the signs you will see if you're not taking enough water. I have told you that it is, it's a moisturizer, and I have told you it's the best medicine. And you know, we'll look at it. If you go to the hospital, they don't know what is wrong with you yet. No matter how terrible that is, what would they do? They'll give you drip now. They'll give you drip. At least that still keeps you until they're able to uh, find out the problem or know the drug they will give unto you. So please, let's make sure that we hydrate ourselves, we hydrate our organs, and it's very good to take water in the morning. First thing in the morning, take water. Some people will say, I can't take water. I can't take water. It feels, I feel like vomiting. I feel nauseated. You can help yourself. Do that. Add a little lime or add lemon or add honey. Never sugar. You can even add um, uh, ginger. Add something to make it taste better in your mouth as long as you take water and as long as it's not sugar. Are you getting me? So when I come next year, how many people will confirm to me that they are not my disciples that are drinking water? If I get around from here, I will, my mom will too. <laughs> my mom will this living healthy life. I had a healthy, very healthy thing in her house yesterday. She gave me juice, cucumber, uh, pear, uh, me, apple, juice. And uh, I was like, ah, Mama, <laughs> God bless you, Mama Lotu. Please put your hands together for her. She's my disciple. Praise the Lord. Then let me talk about the food. The food you eat is very important. You know, I told you, our body is life. And as the cells are wearing out, day in, day out, you need to replace with life. But once you replace with just any junk, by the time you are 40, 45, you are sort of getting, uh, having some issues here and there. So the glory of God at 66, I can tell you, I can jump, I can dance, I can do anything. I don't have... I don't have health challenges of any type that I had when I was in my 40s. Serious. When you talk of bondage of health issues, 
There, there I was. But to the glory of God, I follow what God will do. And to, I'm just enjoying good health. I'm just enjoying good health. And I make so many things natural. Somebody said, I went, look, so many things we do. God will help us. Eat good food. And the good food, mainly what I would recommend, the food that are good. Hmm? Fruits, vegetables. Tubers. Legumes. Grains. Nuts. I said the foods that are good for you won't get old dafun ara. They are vegetables and fruits. Tubers. I want you. Not flour. When I saw bread, I was like this. When we were serving, I said, oh, no. I saw bread and I said, oh. And I asked, is there yam? They said, hey, give me yam now. So they gave me yam and fish stew. That, uh, tubers are good, very good. Because if you eat flour, all that, all that, even an average donut gives you about 350 kilocalories. An average donut. And our children, we start them on Indomie, spaghetti. There's nothing inside these things for puff. Eh? Wheat has about 29 nutrients. By the time Dangonde handles it and turns it to some other things, he has destroyed about 22 of the nutrients. And what you have majorly in the, in, in the wheat will now be the enzyme, which is still the life in it. But by the time Dangote bleaches it and makes it white, to turn flour and all that, you know wheat is not white. And by the time it becomes white, even the enzyme that remains as life is destroyed. So why most of these pastries, they are not good for our health. Don't make it fast food. Don't make it our lifestyle. Maybe once in a while, I'm not saying it's an abomination. Maybe once in a while, maybe your bad day, your three celebrations in your house. Just want to, even when they take me out for bad day, mommy, I can't eat them anymore. They taste where in my head. Very, very where in my head. And don't eat because it is available. Some people eat because food is, no, don't eat because food is available. We were in Israel and they cut the chicken like this. I will see some people, they will carry three chicken. Then put meat again, put fish, I will be like, she won't get on, Before I finish my, my leaves and tomatoes and everything, they had finished it, and I will be like, eh? No less is because it's available. If I want to eat, like I thought when I was selling meat, if I'm going to be eating about this shark every day, every day, I could afford to. But I don't. Maximum of one piece, small piece for upper every day. They are, this money, you will put meat or whatever in my say, Is this meat? Said, ah, instead of the meat, please give me a sour fish stew. And he gave me. I enjoyed my, my food. God bless you, Mama Lotu. So, eat good food. And the major food God wants us to eat, actually eat. You can read it. Genesis 1, 29, food. God God made us vegetarian. That's why in the first 1,700 years on planet Earth, there was no single report of disease. No single report of illness. And people were living 900 years, 900, 900 and something, 800 and something. They were living healthy and, and long. But post noir, we started eating everything available. And then our life expectancy reduced to 120. But somebody came up a thousand years after Daniel and said, you know what? I don't want to defy my body. I don't want to defy my body with the king's meal. I better just, just put me on pause and water, beans, things in that realm, and water. And he did that. Within 10 days, the Bible said he was better in intelligence, physically everything, than his peers that were eating the king's. He was better than people that were eating the king's meal. Because he lived on life diet. Let's live on life diet. It will help us to rebuild better. Everything that has been wearing out in our body will be built back. The one that surprised me was this big, huge lump that I had there. Eh? They call it keloid. It will stop my wristwatch. I just discovered that. I, I looked at it. I, found, I, I sought for it. I couldn't find it again. It has disappeared without using anything but obeying the rules of the Lord according to what we should eat. God will help us to eat right in Jesus' name. So when you are going to eat, consider the nutrients of that food. Please, every day, make sure you eat vegetables. You are here in one year. I cannot buy blender for myself. Raise up your hand. Lord, do come in. I afford the blender. And I was okay. 
In a year, I cannot afford to buy blender. So make it a bad day gift for yourself. Buy blender or smoothie maker. Put your fruit inside. Put, blend it and drink it. I mean, you know, after the three years ago, when, after the meeting, if people went to my, came to my house with me, I wanted to go with them. I started blending. See, mommy, ah, real food. Ah, these fruits are not real food. Ah, by the time I gave them, they were filled up. They were yo Oh, yo yo. Tell your neighbor, fruits yo yo. If you eat it well. And why I like the blending? Why I like the blending is the fact that when you chew these fruits, it's been discovered that our body is able to access about 25% of the nutrients. But when you blend it, your body is able to access about 75% of the nutrients. Then if you juice it, you remove all the nutrients, all you are left with will be the shaft. Most times I don't throw away the shaft too. Your body will access about 90 to 95% of the nutrients. That's why I, get, I virtually almost gave up eating it. I either blend or I juice it. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name.